this is an eBay purchase from years ago probably 10 or 15 years by now I bought this this is an automotive horn I'm gonna go out on a limb and say from the early 30s could be a little older could be a little newer this one was made by Delco Remy which was General Motors house brand it is a K31 6 volt automotive horn I have wanted to fix it up for well ever since I bought it and just never took the time so we're gonna go ahead and do that as you can see the the sheet metal horn part needs a lot of attention I did not get a bracket with it I'd kind of like to get make a bracket so that it can sit on a shelf things are like the tiniest carriage bolts I've ever seen. Surprised they didn't just rivet it together. So I decided to work a little bit on the electrical part of the horn itself because after all what is a horn really a horn if it doesn't make a sound. So, okay so what happens here is we have the magnet in the center. There's the windings for the magnet. When this diaphragm is on there and no electricity is flowing through it, in other words you're not honking the horn nothing is contacting the this plate is separated from the magnet okay and that dowel is not contacting this little fiber flap here with the spring under it alright when you push the button you create magnetism in the center and that sucks this diaphragm the center of the diaphragm down the dowel pushes on the flap, the spring, and that breaks the electrical contact. Let's see if I can... I don't want to push on it with a screwdriver. That breaks the electrical contact between those two points there. You see them in there? Well, if that breaks the contact between the two points, then the magnet turns off. If the magnet turns off, the diaphragm flex back up off of there if it flex back up off of there then the contacts close again and electricity can flow through the magnet again so it sucks it down up down up down up down and the buzzing that happens many many times in a second and the buzzing sound that creates is your horn amplified through the actual horn part Now I've got magnetism at the magnet. Let me turn my. This is a uh, converts 120 AC into 3 through 12 volt DC. I've got it on 6. The magnet's at least working. I have no idea how strong of a magnet it should be. Let's do this. I'll raise it up if I can. Okay, it's stuck. I'll turn it off. It's 
So the magnet portion's working fine. I'm going to um, clean up the contacts and see if that makes a difference. All right, for that, I'm just going to try to slide some emery cloth down in between. It's a very difficult spot to get into here. Okay, so my little power supply I figured out was only half the amperage that I think this horn needs. And I happen to have this uh, scissor lift here in my shop at the moment. And it's got two rows of, uh, no, one row of six volt batteries. So I'm going to go off of that. Are you ready? <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Who knows? 50 years, 60, 70 years, this thing has probably not made a sound till now. And Grandpa's little old Chevy. Woo! All right. Well, I guess the project can proceed. So I think I want to replace these rubber grommets or insulators, whatever you'd call them in this case, because um, they're all cracked and incredibly hard. But as far as everything else electrical, I think I'm going to leave it in place. So I'll need to remove these uh, nut inserts. They're like they work like rivets, how they install. So I'll have to remove that, get them out of there, probably melt a little bit of solder, and then get new ones. But have you noticed how nice the paint, the original paint is inside that thing? It's beautiful. So I think most likely this center piece would have been uh, painted black along with the rest of the horn. But just for fun, I think I'm going to shine it up, kind of give it a brushed look, and clear coat it. Get a little detail that stands out from the rest of the horn. Now I'm just going to brush it with the wire brush. Now a little satin clear. And this is how that turned out. So I'll mask it off and when I sandblast this, paint it, I think it's really going to stand out nice. Thank you. 
So what I've done here is made a wooden buck, like so. I was really debating on how I wanted to straighten this horn out. Um, I mean, there's there's dents all over it, and it's completely out of round. I think it's been thrown around quite a bit, quite a few many years. It would be very difficult to get in there and bump bump dents out. And I even thought about, I'm assuming it's soldered. I thought about melting that solder, pulling it apart, opening it up, and then reclosing it. But I would still need a form, like a wooden buck, to get it round again. So I'm going to try messing around now with a hammer and see if I can straighten this to the wood. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. So thanks to that stunning smartphone camera work, I was able to bring you footage of me building this little doohickey. And I hope to be able to bend this 
eighth inch brass rod a very precise circle.
So I had every intention of spray painting the inside of the horn with semi-gloss paint. And then once that was dry, mix up a cup of full gloss and uh, spray it with my paint gun. But when I got to this point, I liked how the semi-gloss looked so much. I feel it's a truer representation of what it would have looked like originally, the factory paint. So I decided to just go go ahead and paint it with the semi-gloss spray paint. And I may not get as good as finish as I normally would with, uh, with the paint gun, but who knows, that's probably a better representation too. Okay, so right now I am etching the hardware, getting ready for plating it. Painting hardware never really sets right with me because originally they would not have been painted. They would have been heat treated, they would have been hot dipped in a variety of methods, some of which I will show you right now. So I'm not too excited about hot dipping hardware into boiling cyanide, but I think for the parts I want black I will be using gun blue. That'll give it that nice dark black natural look. And then a few parts I will nickel plate. Alright, I've got my hardware in there, all nice and clean. Instead of brushing every single piece. Just get to put it in there. You can see it's blackened. Just like that. Looking pretty good. Well, this was a perfectly clean container. And I know the parts were perfectly clean, so I'm going to Save the rest. Good morning. And isn't that gorgeous? It actually looks really good.
Super Blue, sold at your finest retailers. Here's a part before nickel plating. And here's the same part a short while later, having been plated. If you're interested in learning more about this process, check out the video link I'll put in the description. So I got these new nut inserts, but I just don't like them. They're not... I couldn't find any nice and big and substantial like the originals. So I'm going to try to solder the originals back on.
how this wood acted on the mill. So we're going to get a much cleaner effect under here. That's okay. It'll work. There's a road hog if I ever saw one. Say, are you short sighted between the ears or something? That means get over! Well, there it is. What do you think? Didn't turn out too bad. I kind of rushed through the bass, but it turned out okay. Plus, I have a working horn out of it. Now, what should I fix up? That one? That one? How about this one?